I do my thing. Welcome to Streetsboro, Ohio, to St. Thomas Lutheran Church, here in the loving town of Streetsboro, Ohio, in the square. Pastor Blake is not here today. Pastor Christian is not here today. We're going to have our step-in person, Steve, our church president, going to do the, no, not me. No, I'm not doing it. Anyway, it's the 21st day of Pentecost, XXI, whatever that means. That's 2021, right? I got it right. Anyway, it's not too bad outside. It's not raining, but it's chilly and it's, there's sun up. It's not dark. Anyway, we're all set up here to record and put that on Facebook. And that is running now, ready for church service here in five minutes. Um, we rearranged the system so we've got a guitar up here in front so we can put a guitar up here in the corner. Uh, we've got purple labels back there that tells everybody where the mics go to. Um, yeah, they're hidden. I got a couple under the chair somewhere. Ha 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 ha. And we're having a good morning. Um, hope everybody has a great couple weeks coming up for Thanksgiving. I gotta figure out a costume and go to a Halloween party here soon on the 30th. My daughter-in-law birthday is on the 30th, just like my mother-in-law's Mary Warner it was the 30th of October every year. They both claim they're witches. So there's a little tidbit for inside our little recording today. Everyone have a great day. Oh, I forgot to say, we're broadcasting on 96.9 FM, low power, around the church. Don't come to me, I didn't do it.
Good morning. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> welcome to worship. For you joining us on our Facebook stream, welcome, as well as those who are in our parking lot on our FM radio broadcast. Are there any announcements that anyone would like to make? you for that. There are many announcements in the bulletin, a couple that I'd like to highlight. There will be no Bible study at Christ Lutheran on this Tuesday as pastor will be at a conference. But there will be Bible study here on Thursday. Let's see, what else is there? Ah, the one plus one plus one. For the last five years, our congregation has been part of raising $211,000 plus. So thank you for all who support that uh, mission. And on the very back of our bulletin is a little announcement that tomorrow, former member Virginia Pollock will be turning 100 years old. So she's having a party today. Are there any other announcements that we'd like to make? You know, there was one more. Thank you. Yes, Pastor Just, an update on him. He is recovering from a eye stroke. Um, he's at home doing well. Anything you wish to add, Levi?
Okay, so he's got limited vision out of his right eye and he's being chauffeured by his wife, Christine. An ophthalmologist will be seen sometime this week. Any other announcements? Yes. Hmm. Is there a sign-up list yet for the spaghetti dinner? No, not, yet. not yet. We'll probably. Tr yeah, council will be providing some of the main course type stuff. So if you want to bring a dessert or a side dish, you know, you'll be uh, thanked for that as well. And thank you for bringing that up. There is. Spaghetti dinner coming up. Okay. Thank you. So hopefully get a sign-up sheet just in case so we all know who's bringing what so everyone doesn't bring a bean casserole or something. <laughs> Any other announcements? All right, let us begin with our worship with our entrance hymn. Yep. God, whose almighty word, page f number 400. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we forgive our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, have Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us pure hearts and a sure faith to draw near to you as our Father and to ask you for whatever we need. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes and secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. 
I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Be we will now sing responsibly, sing praise, sing praise. lesson is a reading from St. Paul's letter to the church of Thessalonica. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy God.
gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said, so that they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show the deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test? You are hypocrites. Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, who rules all things, is no tax evader. Jesus paid his taxes to the authorities just like we do. The Herodians and Pharisees were hoping to get him on this point. They asked him, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Now the Herodians and Pharisees were not friends. They even had different views of the Roman Empire. Both groups were Jewish. The Herodians, however, were sympathizers with the Herodian dynasty, a series of rulers put in place by the Roman Empire to keep Palestine in check. Hence, they were also sympathizers of the Roman Empire and would probably have approved Roman taxation. On the other hand, the Pharisees did not endorse Roman rule. The Roman Empire and Roman taxation reminded them that a foreign power was controlling what they thought to be their land. Roman rule was a reminder of the unfaithfulness of their ancestors to the covenant given to them on Mount Sinai. God had punished them for their sin by sending four people to destroy their nation. Since then, the Jewish people had been ruled by kings other than the descendants of David, whom God had put in place to govern his people they would not have approved of paying taxes to the Roman Empire. But the saying is true, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Both groups in our text were united in their disdain for Jesus. The Pharisees did not like Jesus because he associated with those who broke the law of Moses, given the law of God given to Moses tax collectors, sinners, and prostitutes. He also claimed authority over the law of Moses, such as when he said that he and his disciples had the right to pick grain on the Sabbath because he was Lord of the Sabbath. The Herodians likely did not appreciate Jesus because he preached a kingdom other than the one represented by Herod and the established by, and established by the Romans. Yet they thought they had Jesus trapped. If he said that it was unlawful to pay taxes to Caesar, the Herodians would go to the Roman authorities and tell them that Jesus was attempting to start a tax revolt. Other than other Jewish teachers around Jesus' time had done as such and they experienced the full force of Roman law. If Jesus said it was lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, he would lose his popularity among the general populace. Many Jews, like the Pharisees, 
to not enjoy paying taxes to Rome because it was an economic burden for most, and it reminded many of the fact that a foreign power was controlling them. Jesus' answer shocked both groups. After asking to see a denarius, a coin, Jesus asked them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? The Herodians and Pharisees knew the answer. On one side of the coin was an image of Tiberius Caesar, the Roman Empire emperor at the time. On the other side was the blasphemous inscription, Tiberius Caesar, son of the divine Augustus. Acknowledging this, they said Caesar, to which Jesus responded, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Pay taxes to the Roman Empire. To the, to the dismay of the Herodians, Jesus was no revolutionary. He did not seek to overturn the Roman government. Why? Jesus provided the reasons to none other than the highest Roman official in Palestine at the time, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. When asked why he was not putting up a fight at his trial, Jesus told him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given to you from above. Jesus supported paying taxes to the Roman Empire because God had given them authority. Like any form of government, the Roman Empire would not rule if God had not given them this power. St. Paul says the same thing in Romans 13, verses 1 and 2. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists what God has appointed. God has established earthly authorities, as Jesus and St. Paul teach. God has given them the power to punish those who do wrong and to promise benefits to those who do right. Through the threats, punishments, and laws of earthly governments such as our own, God restrains sinners from causing harm to one another and gets them to care for each other. Lives are preserved from murder property from theft, and reputations from libel. When functioning correctly, earthly governments are God's instrument for organizing life from the forces of destruction in a fallen world. However, earthly governments are never perfect. God uses broken human beings, and even ungodly human beings, to accomplish his will. This was true around Jesus' time when Paul could refer to men such as Nero as being servants of God. It was, conf it was also confirmed in the Old Testament when God used Cyrus, a pagan ruler, to accomplish his will for, the, for his people, Israel. The government does not have to be perfect to have authority from God. Sometimes God uses good enough which is all he has to work with regarding earthly powers. Even though Jesus tells us to give to Caesar what is Caesar's, he also tells us to give God what is God's. That means that when, we, that when push comes to shove and the government forces us to do something against God's will, we must say with Peter and the apostles, we must obey God rather than men. Even when we do have just rulers, the earthly government is limited in what they can do. The government might prevent people from killing each other, but they cannot do away with death. The government does not operate in the forgiveness industry either. You get what you deserve. The government is also unable to right all that goes wrong. These points bring us to our second. The kingdom 
or rule Jesus preached and brought to us is not the same as earthly rule. Jesus described this to Pilate. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I may not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from this world. Jesus can approve of Roman taxation because his rule does not conflict with earthly power. Earthly rule is necessary for this age. The rule Jesus brings, the kingdom of God, functions entirely differently. Earthly governments serve by laws, threats, and punishments. The kingdom of God works by forgiving sins no matter what you've done or who you are. The government can only threaten to take life and stave off death. The kingdom of God grants eternal life to those who believe. Earthly governments exercise their power with coercion and force. The kingdom of God comes to us through the proclamation of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and is established not by earthly conquest and might, but by the death of the true Son of the living God on the cross. One is born or becomes a citizen through naturalization in earthly governments. The kingdom of God makes those who were not citizens into citizens by giving them new birth through water and the Spirit. Dear Christian, you live in two kingdoms. In this life, you live under the authorities God placed over you. We pray for these authorities regardless of who they are or what they stand for, that God may guide them and give them the wisdom to do his will. However, these earthly authorities and governments are not and will never be the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was established through the death of Jesus Christ, its king, and it comes to you through the proclamation of the same Son of God. This kingdom will last for all eternity, and for which we pray to be revealed in majesty. Thy kingdom come. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day, number 463.
us rise for the affirmation of our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has gathered us together to be his holy people. Let us pray that we may love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. And let us pray for our neighbor as we pray for ourselves. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Jesus Christ and for all people according to their needs. God of salvation, you deliver your son's work through your word in power and in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen the church's pastors to proclaim your truth. Increase the faith of all who hear, that they may produce works of love, steadfast in their hope. Lord, in your mercy. God of all truth, from the rising of the sun to its setting, you make known your salvation in Christ. Bless fathers and mothers as they teach their children your word and your ways. Let them know that there is no God besides you, that they may rejoice in your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, you appointed Cyrus as your instrument to return your people to Jerusalem. Uphold the authorities of our nation in wisdom and integrity that we might live in peace with a good conscience. Grant that they would make salutary use of the taxes we render and lead us to recognize them as your instruments, honoring them as you command. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our help comes from you who made heaven and earth. You preserve our life. Have mercy on Pastor Just for his healing. We also pray for Marshall Camp, who is in hospice for pancreatic cancer, the brother-in-law of Aggie Blankenship. We also pray for the, McGow the McGowan family, who are having family issues. We also pray for all who are afflicted. Keep them from all evil and shade them from all harm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, Almighty God, guard those who travel. Keep them in their going out and their coming in. Protect them from every trouble. Prosper their journey according to your will, and make their homecomings joyful. 
Lord, in your mercy. True and living God, you have turned us from idols to serve you and live. As we wait for your Son's return in glory, grant that we would faithfully receive him at this altar with repentance and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, our Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a peace with one another. Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have given us. Make our lives dedicated to you in response. Use us and these gifts to help those in need. Amen. Lord, hear us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 501. peace and serve the Lord.